Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to see you. And we're looking at this book, Answering Islam. And I uh, hope you're okay. It's good to see you. And um, <clears throat> we're going to just look at uh, unity of the Quran, scientific accuracy of the Quran, and um, we're going to close that and then at the end of this video I'm going to make another video where I'm just going to share with you as a Muslim my own faith and my own chats with Muslims over the last few years and what I think okay okay the unity of the Quran insisting that the Quran must be divine revelation because it's self-consistent and non-contradictory is also not convincing some critics raise significant questions about how totally consistent the Quran is the concept of abrog uh, abrogation discussed earlier in chapter 5 is one way some previous mistakes were corrected by later verses. This is taught in two, sorry, 216, which says, Such of our revelations as we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, we bring in place one better for light thereof. Knowest that thou Allah is able to do all things. For example, what is called the sword verse in Surah 9.5, supposedly annuls one two four verse that originally encouraged tolerance the quran says emphatically let there be no compulsion in religion two two in surah two two five six yet in other places it urges muslims to fight those who believe not surah nine twenty nine and fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them nine five contradiction can also be found in that the quran claims that no change there can be in the words of God, which Muslims say the Quran is, for there is none that can alter the words and decrees of God. In Surah 634, yet the Quran teaches the doctrine of abrogation, by which later revelations and all previous ones, we read in 2106, revelations we abrogate or cause to be forgotten. Further, Muhammad admits that we substitute one revelation for another, omitting the same verse. That his contemporaries called him a forger for so doing. Scientific arguments, uh, scientific accuracy. This argument has been gained popularity in recent times, primarily due to Bukhali's book, The Bible, The Quran, and Science, in which Christianity is attacked for holding back the progress of science, and the Quran is exalted as promoting science. Indeed, he insists that the Quran marvelously foreshadowed modern science in many of its statements, thus miraculously confirming its divine origin. Here again Muslim apologists are misdirected in their overzealous attempt to prove the divine origin of the Quran. The first thing perceptive critics note is that it was Christianity not Islam that was the mother of modern science. The great, uh, the great philosopher Alfred North Whitehead declared in his famous work Science of the Modern World that Christianity is the mother of science M. B. Foster writing for the prestigious English philosophy journal Mind, noted that the Christian doctrine of creation is the origin of modern science. The very founders of almost every area of modern science were men working from a Christian worldview. This included men like Copernicus, Kepler, Kelvin, Newton, Pascal, Boyle, Maxwell, Agassiz and others. So while Islamic monotheism may made many contributions to modern culture, it is an overstatement for it to claim credit for the origin of modern science. In fact, many Islamic critics point out that Muslim armies destroyed vast resources of knowledge. Pathfinder, for example, notes that under the Caliph Umar, the Muslim soldiers destroyed both vast libraries at Alexandria and Persia. When the general asked Uthma, Umar what he should do with the books, he said to have replied, cast them into the rivers, for if in these books there is guidance, then we have still better guidance in the book of God. If on the contrary there is in them that which will lead astray, then may God protect us from them. It is a serious mistake to assume that a book is inspired simply because it conforms with modern science. Both Muslims and Christians apologists have made this error. There are many reasons why these claims are invalid. Science changes, thus what appears to be harmony between them today may vanish tomorrow. Second, many, many embarrassing mistakes have been made by defenders 
attempting to see modern scientific theories in their holy book. The Roman Catholic Church treatment of Galileo is one example. 3. Even if perfect harmony could be demonstrated between the Quran and the scientific fact, this would not prove the divine inspiration of the Quran. It would simply prove that the Quran made no scientific error. Simply because a book is free of scientific error does not make it inspired of God. At best, scientific accuracy is only a negative test for truth. If error were found in the Quran, it would prove that it was not the word of God. But simply because the Quran was shown to be scientifically faultless, would not prove that it was the word of God. And of course, the same applies to the Bible or any other religious book. Some Christian, critics question just how scientifically accurate the Quran really is. Take, for example, the Quran's highly controversial statement that the human beings are formed from a clot of blood. Then we made the sperm into a clot of congealed blood. Then, that, then of that clot we made a fetus lump. Then we made out of that lump bones and clothed the bones with flesh. 2, 3, 14. This is scarcely a scientific description of embryonic development. In order to avoid the problem, Bukhali retranslates the verse rendering the Arabic word blood clot as the thing which clings. However, this is questionable. It is contrary to recognize Islamic authorities who did three major English translations. It is contrary to, re it is contrary to recognize Islamic authorities who did three major English translations of the Quran. Ali, Pigtail and Arbery. Further, Bukhali himself recognized that a majority of translations describe man's formation from blood clot to addition. This leaves the impression that his own homemade translation was generated to solve the problem since he recognizes that a statement of this kind is totally unacceptable to scientists specializing in the field. Likewise, other critics note that the Quran in Surah 1886 speaks of one travelling west to when he reaches the setting place of the sun, he found it setting in a muddy spring. But even his attempt to explain this problem, Ali admits that this has puzzled commentators. Nor does he really explain the problem, but put simply asserts that this cannot be the extreme west, for there is no such thing. Indeed, there is no extreme west, nor can anyone travelling west eventually come to the place where the sun sets? But this is what the text says, unscientific as it may be. Others have noted the so-called scientific foreshadowing of the Quran is highly questionable. Kenneth Craig notes that it has been frequently claimed by some Muslim exegetes of the Quran that modern invention and scientific data, even nuclear fusion, have been anticipated there and can now be detected in passages not here uh, not hereafter or appreciated for their uh, for what they've been saying meanings earlier unsuspected disclose themselves as science proceeds this conclusion however is strongly repudiated by others of the kind of cooperation the quran as a spiritual scripture neither needs nor approves muhammad kamil hussein called all such exegesis pseudo Fazlur Rahman also deplored it. Amazing mathematical structure. One proof of the Quran divine origin is its alleged mathematical miraculousness based on the number 19. Needless to say, such an apology method does not find a great deal of acceptance in scholarly circles, and this for good reason. No Muslim would accept a message claimed to be from God if it taught idolatry or immorality. In fact, no message containing such claims should be accepted on mathematical grounds alone. So even if the Quran were a mathematical miracle, this would not be sufficient to prove that it was God of God. Even if the odds are astronomic against the Quran having all these amazing combinations of the number 19, it proves nothing more than there is a mathematical order behind the language of the Quran. Since language is an expression of the order of human thought, and since this order can often be reduced to mathematical expression, 
it would be no surprise that a mathematical order can be found behind the language of the Quran. Further, the same kind of argument only based on the number seven could be used to prove the inspiration of the Bible. Take the first verse of the Bible in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Nearly points out that the verse consists of seven Hebrew words and 28 letters. Seven plus four, these are three nouns, God's heaven and earth, their total numeric, numeric value is 77. Seven plus 11, the verbs created, has the value of 203, seven times 29. The objectives can't contain in the three words with 14 letters. 7 plus 2, the other four words contain subject also with 14 letters. 17 times 2 and so on. But no Muslim would allow this as an argument in favour of the divine inspiration of the Bible. At best the argument is esoteric and unconvincing even if even most Muslim scholars avoid using it. Many Muslim apologists point to the transformed, li transformed lives and cultures by the Quran as a proof of the divine origin. But critics point out that this is an insufficient test for its, for its alleged heavenly or divine origin. First of all, this is the kind of thing that should be expected. For one fervently believes something to be true, he lives by it. But this still leaves open the question as to whether it is the word of God. Any set of ideas fervently believed and applied will transform believers and their culture. This is true whether Buddhist, Christian, Islamic, etc. Many critics find it no surprise that so many converted to Islam when it is remembered what the promised reward was for those who did and the threatened punishment for those who fought against Muhammad. Those who submitted were promised paradise with beautiful women. But those punishment of those who wage war against God and his apostles strive with might is execution or crucifixion. Islamic tradition reports that Muhammad gave the following exhortation to his followers. The sword is the key of heaven and of hell. A drop of blood shed in the cause of God at night spent in arms is of more avail than two months fasting and prayer. Whoever falls in battle, his sins are forgiven at the day of judgment. I don't know how you can believe that as Muslims that's just really really can't be the word of God with that kind of idea I'm sorry the rapid spread of Islam well the Islam's battle has spread if it started with the sword <laughs> I mean come on Christianity didn't have the sword when it first started out for the first 300 years, um, Christians were defenseless. 